Located 50 miles off the coast of Louisiana, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded right before Earth Day and has spilled millions of gallons of oil into the Gulf of Mexico. For biologists, how this oil will affect wildlife is a huge concern. From fish and turtles in the open ocean, to oysters and other invertebrates on the sea floor, to grasses in the coastal wetlands, it's not a question of if these organisms will be affected, but how much. The, the sea turtle is kind of the, um, is becoming you know, one of the poster species for this, this tragedy. And, and, uh, and the reason is because it gets hit at every, at every life stage from, from the babies and, and the females on the beach um, to the turtles that have to eat and make a living in the ocean uh, at the surface and on the bottom. So when birds get oil on their feathers, it mats their feathers and it reduces their ability to thermoregulate. They'll then ingest the oil while they're preening, but it also causes them to spend all of their time preening and not searching for food. And birds really need to spend quite a bit of time searching for food. It would be especially harmful if the oil got to the coast of Florida where manatees live because manatees would be particularly susceptible to oil in their environment. Healthy wildlife in the Gulf of Mexico is important not just for its own sake, but for our sake as well. Humans depend on the Gulf for commercial fishing, food, and tourism. And the impact on coastal wetlands, already stressed by human activity, would be especially troubling. Wetlands are very productive ecosystems. They provide many services that we need. They filter water, they purify air, they're nurseries for economically important fisheries. They're also large stores of carbon. Although a lot of uncertainty still exists, scientists at least have previous studies to draw from. In 1989, a paper in Science detailed the ecological effects of an oil spill near Panama. The authors indicated that their data could help those dealing with future oil spills in the Gulf of Mexico. One of the reasons that their study was so valuable is that they had baseline data. So they had data about the communities um, prior to the oil spill so they could compare um, what animals were there, what plants were there, how things were doing before the oil spills. And they found that invertebrates that couldn't move and couldn't get out of the way were killed almost immediately um, when oil hit land or hit the reef where they lived. And also um, mangroves, which is kind of an intertidal tree, that many of those trees were killed when exposed to oil. Currently, Academy scientist Peter Rutnerine is working with Louisiana State University to track the effects of the oil spill. His research targets are commercial oysters, snails, and clams. Taking samples of these animals before the oil hit the shore, two weeks from now and at the end of August, Peter and his colleagues hope to discover how these small invertebrates are affected and how they recover. This should be indicative of the entire Gulf food web. This is a huge disaster, both uh, for the natural world, for the ecosystem, because this stuff stays for a long time. And it's a human disaster because uh, the fisheries are one of the most important sources of income along the entire Gulf Coast. We need to understand what impact this has and how to respond to it.